With FSR 4, we have AMD's first public-facing foray into machine-learned graphics for consumers, which aims to supplant FSR 3. At the moment, only RDNA 4 GPUs are supported, so no running this on an AMD GPU earlier than RDNA 4 or NVIDIA and Intel GPUs. We do not have great details into the technology behind FSR 4, but AMD is specifically touting the Int 8 performance with sparsity in the slide deck for FSR 4, which on an RX 9070 XT is 779 tops. To put that into perspective, an RTX 3090 has roughly 640 Int 8 tops with sparsity, an RTX 4090 has 1321.2 tops of the same, and a PS5 Pro has roughly 300 tops, presumably with sparsity as well, given that is how these things are usually advertised. So on a theoretical level, the top build RDNA 4 GPU has some impressive machine learning performance and it will be leveraging it to run the heavy workload that FSR 4 represents. FSR 4 being heavy bears out in simple side-by-side -side performance testing between FSR 3 and FSR 4 on an RX 9070 XT. At 4K performance mode, it was easy to see that FSR 4 was around 8% slower on average than FSR 3 at parity settings over the course of the Ratchet & Clank opening cutscene, which I have elected to use here as a benchmark. You can see the frame rate there as two parallel lines on the bottom left that move almost always in sync, showing the same gap between FSR 3 with it being more performant. So an RDNA 4 GPU will be paying more in performance for FSR 4 over FSR 3. The question then becomes, is the image quality much better to make up for that increased cost? This is a key question for FSR 4, and as a reviewer, I think FSR 4 needs to be better than FSR 3 in every way possible, so as to start filling the large gap in image quality between AMD and NVIDIA GPUs. Thankfully, we can rejoice as, based on my first examinations, AMD's FSR 4 thoroughly clears up nearly all of the obvious image pain points of FSR 3 that I've investigated for this video. A big area where FSR 3 struggled is with particle effects. With FSR 3 and earlier, you would often see ghosting on particles in an intense manner at any resolution. Here in Horizon Forbidden West, the detail on the waterfall surface is lost completely as you see many dozens of frames ghosting into one another with FSR 3. Switching over to FSR 4, that entire issue is cleared up, much like we would see with the other machine learning image reconstruction techniques. It is incredible to see how much of a difference this makes, as without it ghosting constantly, the flow rate of the waterfall looks so much faster and more chaotic. This goes to show you how bad image reconstruction can actually have an effect on artistic intent, where FSR 4 is now showing the waterfall as intended. Something similar happens with transparencies, in FSR 3, like in the water surface here. Transparent surfaces like glass or water typically lack motion vectors in games, and FSR would fail there, here leading to a stippled, painterly water surface that kind of smudges into itself over time. Switching over to FSR 4, we can see how the water surface's normal mapped detail now shines through. We can see the individual ripples and wave crests on its surface, and that stippled look is gone. Once again, with good image reconstruction, we can see the art as intended instead of ghosting getting in the way. Another area cleaned up by FSR 4 is the quality of objects of low relative motion. Compared here, as I see it, the average amount of surface detail on the objects is boosted between FSR 3 and 4, here in performance mode 4K. There's a smidge more inner surface texture detail if we look at the pouch on Elo's back and the skirt underneath it. We can see that FSR 4 image quality itself has more contrast while FSR 3 in comparison looks hazy. The new technique has a sharper look overall. That is at the same resolution internally, so we see now more sharper defined images with FSR 4. That is nice, but the biggest difference I would argue between FSR 3 and 4 is now there is much better anti-aliasing and less pixelization artifacts. The stability of the detail is just higher. In motion, this means less pixel crawl and less issues persisting from frame to frame. If I pause, you can see what I mean. Take a look at FSR 3 here. Even at the low velocity here of Aloy moving, the objects that are moving have a pixelated look to them with rough edges. Aloy's finer details look like they are being viewed through a screen door. On the right with FSR 4, anti-aliasing is actually top notch, smoothing edges and giving the image a distinctly less digitized look. 
I would say FSR4 is anti-aliasing in general is fantastic. In more intense motion, this difference is extreme. With FSR3 in motion on the left here, we can see those typical FSR problems of disocclusion fizzle that I've been emphasizing ever since FSR2 came out. Moving objects like Aloy and her gear and the areas behind those moving objects resolve with a rough, blown out, pixelated look. In older versions of FSR, this was even more apparent as it appeared oversharpened as well. This is and was perhaps FSR's biggest fault to date. It fails badly with more complex motion, where upscalers like DLSS or XESS just didn't. FSR 4 on the right here is blowing FSR 3 out of the water. In motion, it is incredibly clean and anti-aliases very well, showing none of the blown out pixelization or disocclusion fizzle of FSR 3. I think this is incredibly obvious if I just let the video play out here, but let's just do a quick pause to really hammer it home. I don't really need to say much here. FSR 4 is just so much better in motion than FSR 3, and this is the key area where it needed to be. With this being said, I would say FSR 4 is an incredible replacement for FSR 3 for RDNA 4 GPU users, and it is exactly what I wanted to see from AMD. You are no longer greeted by obvious image quality faults by choosing an upscaler on an AMD GPU. I found it kind of deal breaking before. Without even the comparison to FSR 3, I would also say in a vacuum, FSR 4 looks like it has great image quality and it reaches that threshold of this is great and I would have no hesitation to turn it on. AMD GPUs can now have great image quality. But how is the gap bridged between AMD and Nvidia GPUs now? Briefly comparing FSR to DLSS, I have some enlightening insights. For one, I would say based upon a comparison like this one here in Horizon Forbidden West, I can say in a number of ways that FSR 4 has exceeded image quality aspects found in DLSS's CNN model for objects at rest or low velocity. If we focus in on the detail of Aloy's back here, I want you to notice how FSR 4 and DLSS in its older CNN mode are resolving a similar amount of detail on most surfaces. Sharpness is similar, but FSR 4 does have a few areas where it is resolving more detail. Take a look at the straps on the quiver here. The little braided design is showing up in a more detailed way in FSR 4 than in DLSS's CNN model. That is a small advantage overall, I would say though, and the big advantage from FSR 4 comes in image stability. Nearly any and every edge you look at here in this comparison in FSR 4 has less aliasing emotion, so less stair steps, edges that move, and flicker over time as they change. This is especially noticeable on the rib part of Aloy's armor, those little bits of leather straps coming off the opening of the quiver, and it is especially visible on the leather pouch on her back. FSR 4 is just more stable while achieving similar levels of detail overall. In essence, FSR 4 is beating DLSS's CNN model here in an area where DLSS was always kind of on top. That is great to see, but that is the old model. Let's add in the transformer model, and I think we see a less flattering show. In general, it's easy to see that the transformer model of DLSS resolves a lot more detail than FSR 4 and the DLSS CNN model. The skirt, the pouch on Aloy's back, and all the aspects of the quiver are a lot more detailed. And it's not just image sharpening, but real detail, as we can see with the knotted crisscrossing ropes here and edging. On top of this, the detail in the transformer model is stable across many frames, and it shows less aliasing on edges than FSR 4. You can particularly notice that on the quiver. So in the aspect of stability and detail for objects at low velocity, I would say FSR 4 occupies a place between the DLSS versions. It has detail levels similar to the CNN model with it being a bit better at times. That detail though is more stable with better anti-aliasing than the CNN model. Still, it is losing in an obvious manner versus the transformer model for detail and anti-aliasing. Intense motion sees a similar ranking. Pausing here with Aloy mid-spin, we can see how FSR 4 and DLSS CNN are similar, and this is a good thing as DLSS always looked pretty great in motion, though there are areas where FSR 4 can be better. Looking at these bits of the bow and the detail on our back armor, I would say FSR 4 is showing them with less wave-like distortion, which is better. Same with the area over here, less wave-like distortion, or stylization as I'll call it. Adding in DLSS Transformer shows a similar divide as we saw earlier. There's much more detail and preserved sharpness on the Transformer side here with none of the waviness stylization as we see in CNN or FSR 4. Though there is a catch I would say. 
DLSS Transformer can sometimes resolve added in striations into the image, like check out the shadow detail here, some slight vertical striations there not found on the CNN or FSR4 model. So there can be some regressions in the Transformer model it would appear that is befitting of its beta status. But in general, in movement, I think it's kind of plain to see that FSR4 is better than the CNN model in some ways, but it falls visibly behind the DLSS4 Transformer model. Put up next to each other in terms of performance across competing GPUs, we can see that FSR4's cost is significant. FSR4 here is performing around 20% worse than the DLSS CNN model in this game running on an RTX 5070 Ti, while FSR4 is on that RX 9070 XT. Image quality is most similar between CNN and FSR4, with FSR4 having the edge I mentioned earlier. When compared with the Transformer model engaged on the 5070 Ti, we can see how the 9070 XT is now only 5% slower as the Transformer model is significantly more expensive on that 5070 70Ti. FSR4 though does have the image quality concessions in comparison that I mentioned earlier. So looking at that performance between Transformer and FSR4 here across the GPUs, you'll have worse image quality on the AMD GPU, but it is still good enough image quality by my metric, and it is importantly 150 US dollars cheaper by listed MSRP. That for sure makes the proposition very enticing to get an AMD GPU, especially since FSR4 will evolve in the future just as DLSS has. My final takeaway from my look at FSR4 here is that AMD are technically still behind in image reconstruction, but they have made an immense advancement here with RDNA 4 and FSR4. You can now have great image quality on an AMD GPU, absolutely obliterating FSR3, and it is to boot better than the previous version of DLSS in key areas. As I see that, that is an amazingly positive development, and I look forward to exploring more aspects of image quality between DLSS and FSR4 in future work. If you did like this video, hit that like button, subscribe, write a comment below, help us out on Patreon, follow on Blue Sky, and as always, this is Alex, bringing you farewell, and auf Wiedersehen!